Hey there, welcome to the 29th Easy JavaScript tutorial part of EasyProgramming.net. In this tutorial, we'll briefly cover self invoking functions. So, self invoking functions are exactly what they sound like functions that invoke themselves. Unless you loop through them, they usually run just once per script. So, let's take a look at the syntax of the self invoking function. As you would declare uh, an anonymous function, as I have here, uh, you would actually put this in parentheses, as I have open and close parentheses here. And from the last two tutorials, you learned that to invoke a function, you have the function name and you do an open and close parentheses with any arguments that need to go in it. And that's how you invoke a function within itself. So let's do a little bit of practice and you'll get a better understanding of how self-invoking functions work. So like the last two tutorials, I have two uh, variables, loan and interest, already declared. So let's start our function. So, like I said, you want to start out with an open and close parentheses. For better visibility, let me just put that down there, and we'll start out with the keyword function. We're declaring a function here, and an open and close parentheses in curly braces, we want our block of code. So we'll just do var calculated, declare a variable called calculated, and do loan plus loan times interest. That's all we're doing. And down here we'll do, uh, let's see, document dot get element by ID. I believe I call it total. Enter HTML equals to calculate it. There you go. So now we have the our anonymous function here. Anonymous meaning that it doesn't have a name, so you can't call it from anywhere. It'll just run here, and it is taking loan and interest and doing its math and storing it to calculate it. And we're going to output that into our HTML here. So this is the base structure of a self-invoking function. But we're not done yet. We want to invoke it just like any other function. You want to invoke it with an open and close parentheses and close it off with a semicolon since it's uh, just a line of code. So this is done. So now if I update and run, there you go. Our HTML has updated with this. Just like regular functions, you can have parameters and arguments. Uh, the only difference is that it may look a little bit confusing is that you put the parameters up here. So let's do param1. I'm not sending anything down. And then here it would be argument1. Because remember, when you're invoking the function is where you pass the arguments. And in the function itself is where you have the parameter placeholders, which it uses to calculate something. Here we could have passed in loan and interest. Let me show you what that would look like, loan and interest. And here I'll call it x and y. Uh, it's not necessary. If I update and run this, it'll still run because loan and interest are global variables and are accessible here. But if I change this to x, x, and y, update and run, it still works. Because now loan is in place of the parameter x and interest is in place of the parameter y. So I hope this makes sense. Self-invoking functions are sometimes necessary. Uh, it allows you to uh, skip a step of having to declare a function down here, invoking it in your script, and then doing whatever. If you need it just once, sometimes the self-invoking function is the way to go. Well, I hope you've learned a lot about functions over the last few tutorials. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. Remember to check out my website at easyprogramming.net. Thanks. Have a good one.